Hey everybody, I'm Pete, and this is the SparkFun Tsunami Super Wave Trigger Quick. This is a super powerful audio board capable of doing high quality audio, 44 kilohertz, 16 bit. And what makes it extra unique is that it actually has eight outputs. Um, it also can do polyphony, where you can play one wave file and then trigger another one during that, and it will layer and mix them together for you. It also has four methods of control, including quick. So let's take a closer look at the hardware and then uh, talk about some of the specs, and then we'll jump into some Arduino examples. All right, so first off, you'll notice the big microcontroller here in the middle. This is the Atmel ATSAM S70, and that's handling all of the audio processing and it is controlling the analog devices codec up here. This is the ADAU1328, and it's capable of taking two analog signals in and outputting eight. So right over here by the codec, you'll notice we've got our audio in and out. Um, and I didn't mention that earlier, but it can actually take two channels of audio in, and then you can mix those into your project as well. So if you have another sound source, whether it's a microphone or an mp3 player or your phone or something, you can wire that into these inputs and then decide which output you want to send them to. Um, first of all, uh, let's talk about power a bit. So you've got a couple options on this board. We've got USB-C right here and then also these headers over here. And you'll notice it says VN can be 5 to 10 volts DC. So you don't really want to go too much higher than 10 volts on this because these regulators here have to work hard to bring that down to 3.3. This board is all 3.3 logic, so if you're talking to it um, via serial or I2C, um, you want to make sure that all your logic level is 3.3 volts. Right here, we've got our micro SD card, and with that you can load it up with WAV files. So, so next, let's talk about all the ways you can control this. There are actually four ways you can control the board. We've got um, triggers along the wall here on the right side of the board. These are probably the easiest way to control the board. You can wire up a button, um, or you could wire it up to the I.O. on your microcontroller and be firing away wipe files in no time. Uh, next up, we've got our serial port. So this right here is going to give you RX and TX to talk to the S70. And um, with that, you can control lots of different things, uh, play tracks, stop tracks, volume, fade, many more. They're all in the Arduino library. Next control method, we've got MIDI here. So we've got in and out. This is useful if you want to control this board from a keyboard or from maybe some electronic drums or anything that talks MIDI. Uh, it's got the full opto isolation right there, so that's the way MIDI works, keeps everybody protected. And last, we've got Quick, this little guy right here. So we've also written a complete Arduino library where you can simply plug in the Quick cable and start controlling this thing. There are two buttons on this board. We've got a user button and a reset button. These are primarily used to update firmware. So what you do is you throw a new hex file on your micro SD card and then you cycle, um, you hold down the user button and press the reset and that'll get your new firmware onto the board. And lastly, we've got a nice stat LED here. It's a tricolor stat LED, so that can give you messages, uh, give you status indication on whether a track is playing or if there's a problem with the file or maybe there was a problem with your micro SD card. So next let's jump into some actual fun Arduino examples. All right, so we got all our stuff set up here. We've got the Tsunami with some extra boards to make it happen. Got some speakers and my laptop running Arduino to upload some example sketches. So here we've got the Tsunami and it is being controlled via Quick. So I've got a Quick cable here and my Redboard Quick right here. Um, the audio output is going into the SparkFun Noisy Cricket. And so we've got eight outputs, so I've got four stereo uh, audio amps. And then those are making their way to a little breadboard here with some connectors to make connecting to the speakers a little bit easier. Um, I've also got a uh, potentiometer coming into one of my analog pins to adjust tempo on the drum machine example. 
For this first example, we're going to use the Tsunami in its most basic way, and we're going to use the trigger pins. So essentially all you need to do is wire up the trigger line to a button and then connect that to ground, and that's going to cause the audio to, to play. Um, in our hookup guide, we provide a bunch of example WAV files, and so if you load all of those onto your SD card, then you can run through all the examples in the hookup guide in the Arduino library, and it works pretty well. So let's, uh, let's try triggering some sounds here. I'm going to make sure my volume's up a little bit on my noisy cricket there. And then I have ground uh, connected just where it's available on this serial header pin. And now I'm just going to simply ground out the triggers and watch some audio play. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. What happened to nine? Seven, eight, nine. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. <laughs> so, as you can see, you can just simply ground out those triggers and trigger all the sounds. And we have these example files so that you kind of know which one you're triggering, and it's real easy that way. Next, let's jump into some quick control. I'm going to actually program my Redboard quick, and then it's going to control the tsunami over the quick cable and do some fun stuff with that. So for this first example using the Arduino library, it's actually really basic. It's just going to play that one wave file, but it's going to do that with a quick command. So I'm going to upload example one from the Arduino library, and um, we'll hear, hear a wave file play. I can also mention too that in the examples, it does our kind of standard um, begin function, so it kind of checks to see that it's there. Oh, it played. Sweet. So if I hit reset on this red board, one. I get my track one playing. Um, but what I was saying was that all the examples, before they actually do what they're going to do, like play a track, they do a dot begin function, so they check to see that it's there on the bus. And if something's not connected, then I get a nice serial debug that says, hey, your wiring's not right. Try reconnecting. Um, cool. Let's jump into the next example. Okay, so for example two in the Arduino library, we're going to start playing with volume. And it's actually as simple as calling a single function from the library um, where you, you call track gain, and then we can set different volumes. So in this example, we start at negative 20 dB, negative 10 dB, and then zero. And that's progressively going to get louder each time it plays the file. Let's give it a shot. Two, two, two. There it is. <laughs> All right, we're going to do example three from the Arduino library, which shows how to do a fade. And so we can call a function, tell it to play a track, and then gently fade it in for a certain amount of time, play that track, and then you can also fade out. This one, I have an example file that is just a recording of some rain and thunder, and it's going to fade in for five seconds, play for five seconds, and then fade out. Let's give it a shot. Ah, what a nice fade. And gently fades away. So in this next example, we're going to actually use polyphony. And I'm going to play a long track that's just the, that same recording of the rain and thunder, but then we're going to randomly fire some nice recordings of bird sounds. And so this shows how you can play tracks on top of the track, and it mixes them together for us. So here's our rain pile starting, and then it's gonna randomly choose a time and play some sound, some birds. There it was, and Nell's ears went way high. <laughs> I love it. So we get some thunder mixed in too. This is a pretty fun example to show how to make nice uh, sound environments. Nice, that was the cardinal. So we've got a few examples in here, um, and that's pretty much that example. All right, next we are going to do the drum beat example. And the tsunami is actually going to start triggering over quick um, the kick drum wave file and then the snare drum wave file and the hi-hat in the ride. 
and it's going to do this in a sequence that sounds like a drum beat to us. We have programmed some beats with just simple arrays and some header files. And I've also got a potentiometer hooked up to one of my analog pins, and I can control the tempo of the beats. So let's give it a shot. Nice. So that's a pretty good little four on the floor sort of beat. And then uh, goes to eighth inch hi-hats. I got a couple different beats it's gonna cycle through. And let's play with this knob a little bit. Whoa. A little bit faster. Yeah. And then we can really slow things down. Yeah, that's like a good halftime groove right there. Lay it into the bridge, you know? And then like, that's, that's some fast drum beats right there. Once I got this example going, I was playing with that knob for like half an hour. All right, for the last example, we are actually gonna recreate that old instrument called the theremin, which is kind of fun. You get to control pitch with distance and volume with distance this way. Um, so we're gonna actually use two SparkFun quick distance sensors. And I actually have a MUX here to communicate to both the distance sensors because they're on the same I2C address. So let's go ahead and plug these in and see if we can make some sounds happen. Okay, so this goes into the main. And this goes into the tsunami. And then we got to reset. Oh yeah. Here we go. So with this one here, I can make it louder. It's actually, that little buzzing you're hearing is clipping on the audio amp. The signal gets so loud. And then this one controls the frequency. And this is showing how the tsunami can actually, you can adjust the sample rate offset. And so it's actually just got a wave file on there, but then we're playing it back at different sample rates. I'm gonna do my best at um, a little too much coffee today helps with this instrument. Let's see, can you hear my vibrato? Sort of like a, an uneasy over the rainbow. <laughs> uh, what else do I got? Uh, let's try smoke on the water. Yeah, I think that's pretty much all I got for the show today. Um, so yeah, as you can see, the uh, Tsunami Wave Trigger, Super Tsunami Wave Trigger, is pretty powerful audio board and a lot of fun. Um, the next project you have audio involved, make sure to pick one up from sparkfun.com. magically make it look like I'm seamlessly talking <laughs> without any mistakes. Um, and I probably just got that totally wrong. <laughs> I kind of always do this though in my yeah. videos, I feel like. <laughs> this took months to design <laughs> and it's ready. And that's gonna progressively get larger. That's going to perfect it.